After Effects CS3 has now added support for vector shape layers. And these are available. Let's just make a new comp here. Composition, new composition. And I'll just work at DV, actually this is D1 resolution, that's fine. There we go. And you have a few ways to access these. You have up here in your toolbar, shapes. And you'll see we have things like the rectangle tool, the rounded rectangle tool, ellipse and things. And some of these were things we had before. What's important is that you look right next to it here. Tool creates shapes or tool creates mask. Previously, these tools were always used to generate masks. And you might have applied a mask to a solid, creating a shape, but they're not the same thing anymore. When you have it selected that the tool is going to create a shape, double-clicking the ellipse tool, for example, adds an ellipse. If you don't want it to add and fill the whole space, you can click with it and draw. Just like most tools, holding down the shift key constrains the proportions. All right, so those are pretty straightforward. And you're thinking, okay, great, I can add circles and stars. What's the big deal? Well, you have a polygon and a star tool. And a polygon is basically saying as many sides as you want. And so if you draw with the polygon here, in this case, it drew a pentagram, five-sided. But if I twirl this down here, you'll see that we have properties here. For example, points. With five points, there's five sides. Okay? Six sides. Hexagon. I'm going to skip seven because I don't remember what it's called. Probably a septagon. And there's an octagon. And so forth and so forth. Dungeons and Dragon players in the room probably know the rest, but there you go. And you can make these multi-sided objects as well as adjust the outer radius for a size and work with some of the properties here. Okay? Now, you'll see that when you add a shape, you have a bunch of properties that you can modify. Of course, we could do things like rotation, and we can change the thickness and the color of the stroke, as well as its opacity. I know, you always wanted to make a stop sign in After Effects. That's the one feature that kept you from upgrading. And you could do things like change the blending mode and the fill color and the opacity. But here's where things start to get interesting, okay? We could transform this, of course, by scaling it. But we can also add additional properties here by clicking on the Add menu. So we can do things like add properties to do things like repeat or twist. And so I can add a twist property and twist this into all sorts of other new shapes. Let's get rid of the twist property. Let's add something like pucker and bloat, some people's favorite illustrator filter. And look, now are you getting ideas of what's possible? It goes into a gear shape or a flower-like shape. So it's a very flexible tool but not when you first look at it. You're like, great, it makes a circle. Moving on. You have to click the Add menu because all good things come to those who add. And you can add properties and do things here. We can do a repeater. And a repeater will allow you to do things like go ahead and have multiple copies. And you know, go ahead and let's adjust those properties so they get smaller and sort of scale off into space. And you know, I want those individual ones to have different rotations. It would help if I actually put the anchor point at the center of the flower, perhaps. I had moved it. Let's use the pan behind tool there. And now it's at the center. And we can go ahead and do things like have the ones farther away fade off. Then you could do fun things like use the offset property to simply animate them through. 
See what I did there? I could basically say keyframe and use offset. And offset's just like text animation. It slides it along the slider of the scale. So as we offset it, they can move farther away or closer to us. So let's just adjust this property till they first appear. There we go. And then I'll go forward to say two seconds or so and offset this so it goes through. And what I could do is essentially create like an animated flower wipe. See what I just did? Like a transition. Boom. And you're saying, well, that's great, but they're all the same color and that's not useful. Well, sure it could be. Again, where do we click? Add. And under the add value, we have all sorts of other properties. So we can deal with things like color and we can take advantage of the fill. And we could just keyframe the fill and say, start with red and go to blue. And they could change. Okay, Let's actually come up here to the top and do it up here under this fill. There we go. Color, red, start, blue. <laughs> See how it changed color over time? So you can do some fun things. Here's a couple of examples, okay? Here I animated the stars just by using that offset property and the animation. You could do things like make relatively abstract shapes. And here we are playing with a shape layer with a few filters applied. And we basically went under the stroke category and did this. We turned it into, uh, if you look closely at the stroke, we added dashes. So we cut the stroke up into a dashed line and then we animated the property of the dashes moving and we repeated it so it was really layered, so all these lines are intersecting and floating. Conceptually makes sense, right? And what we then did is just applied a few filters. Animated shape control. This was just originally a star with a bunch of strokes applied to the multipoint star. And then we added a blur. And then used the calculations effect to punch up that blur and create sort of an intense center area of a glow. Now you're saying, how in the world do you come up with things like that? Well, you have the whole presets over here that you can look at. And if you take a look at some of the presets, you will see presets for shapes, including backgrounds and individual elements. You know, for example, give me some chasing boxes. Let's go ahead here, turn this layer off, and we'll just unselect it so it makes a new layer. Give me some chasing boxes, double click, undo. Give me some marquee, and you can play with these and change them, do whatever you want. And you've got a whole wealth here of things like sprites, which are gonna be shapes and things. Give me a scope. So you can look at these for inspiration, and they are entirely vector, so you can modify them and create multi-layered composites of shapes that move and animate in your motion graphics pieces. If you are unsure and you want to browse your presets, a lot of people don't realize that you could choose File, Browse, Template Projects. And by choosing this, it's going to launch Adobe Bridge, which is Adobe's file browser that is now completely compatible with the After Effects projects as well as the presets. Now, Bridge just launched for the first time here, and it's going to that page. There we go. And here are the template projects. And you're like, oh, okay, well, those are templates. What about my presets? Well, you could see those as well. We just go up a level, and we go in the presets folder. And we were just taking a look at shapes, right? There's shapes. Let's take a look at these elements. And there it is, and you can see it animated. So you don't have to keep clicking and applying, clicking and applying to see what's possible. So definitely worth exploring.